Henry VIII and his counselors lived a long time ago, but they still have something to teach us today. Hello friends, it's good to be with you as always. Thank you for taking a little time to be with me today. Today I want to talk about some historical events that I actually think have something to teach us today. And I was prompted to think about this because I just finished a book called The Mirror and the Light by Hilary Mantel. This ended up being the final of what became a trilogy uh, about the life of Henry VIII. Um, and I'll say a little more about that in a second, but Henry VIII, we all know, I think, is famous. He lived in what, or he ruled in the early 1500s, and he's most famous uh, for all of the wives he had, uh, many of whom he also killed. Uh, there's actually a musical that just came out, I think, in 2017, toured the United States in 2019, uh, called Six, about the six wives of Henry VIII. Um, so again, I'm gonna say a word about what Mantell's book uh, why I think it can help us think about a contemporary issue theologically. Uh, but to set the stage, I want to go back to another uh, play written about Henry VIII uh, that, uh, called A Man for All Seasons by Robert Bolt. It's actually a pretty famous play. It became a movie in 1966 and it won the Academy Award for Best Picture uh, that year or the next year. I suppose it was 1967 when it came out. I mentioned that movie because that movie tells the story of the events of Henry VIII through another one of his counselors uh, named Sir Thomas Moore. Now, Moore, M-O-R-E, has been sainted in the Catholic Church and he's revered even in the Protestant churches today as a hero of faith because he stood up to Henry VIII uh, when Henry VIII wanted to uh, declare himself the uh, head of the Church of England. And Moore would not stand for that and he ended up giving his life for that. So in that movie, Moore is viewed as the hero and of course, a hero has to have an evil villain to be his foil. And in that movie, the evil villain is another powerful man of the time named Thomas Cromwell. Now, it turns out that the trilogy that Mantell wrote uh, is told largely through the lens of Thomas Cromwell, much more sympathetically than it would have been in The Man for All Seasons. Um, now, I am not going to presume to collapse the uh, amazing literary achievement of Hilary Mantel's three volumes here in a couple of minutes. Uh, they are amazing. They're wonderful books. They've won all kinds of awards. Um, some people have critiqued them for certain reasons related to historical issues, but I found them to be fascinating. And the simple point I want to make Again, compared to A Man for All Seasons, which is also a renowned play and a wonderful movie, is that Mantell makes the point effectively that these were complicated, complex times. And uh, maybe it's not as simple as simply white in the form of Thomas More and black in the form of Thomas Cromwell. Maybe there's a little more gray there. And the theological point I want to make for us today in 2021 is I do think we tend to look at the world and we say that's bad, that's good, or that person or that group is bad, that person or that group is good. And I want to suggest here that perhaps the reality, sorry I'm opening up my phone because there's a quote I want to read, perhaps the reality of our existence, the reality of life is a little more complex and nuanced and gray than that. Uh, and as an example of that, <clears throat> I will lift up a very famous quote by a, a famous uh, individual who spent a long time in, in the Soviet prison system named Alexander Solzhenitsyn from his masterwork called the Gulag Archipelago. And here's what he says in this quote, if only there were evil people somewhere insidiously committing evil deeds and it were necessary only to separate them from the rest of us and destroy them, right? That would simple. there are the bad people, let's separate them, destroy them, we're gonna be great. Everything's gonna be fine then. And then he says this, but the line dividing good and evil cuts through the heart of every human being. It's not so easy to figure out that person's good, that person's bad. The line dividing good and evil cuts through the heart of every human being. And who is willing to destroy a piece of his own heart, he says. 
Martin Luther, in a different way, said something very similar when he said that each of us is simultaneously a saint and a sinner. We're not all bad and we're not all good. We're a mix of both. And I guess I want to suggest today that recognizing that, I would call it, deep truth of our Christian faith and accepting that truth allows us to be less judgmental about other people, allows us to maybe look with more uh, forgiveness on other people, and also allows us to be kinder, kinder and gentler to ourselves, and maybe to accept more fully the grace of God which comes to us despite whether we do everything perfectly. And here's a little spoiler alert. No one does everything perfectly, right? As someone once said, and I think it's a, it's a little quippy, but I think it makes the point beautifully, nothing you can do will make God love you more, but that's also connected to the corollary that nothing you can do will make God love you less. You can't impress your way to God loving you, and you can't mess up so badly that no, God will no longer love you. God loves you, not because of you, who you are, or what you've done, but because of what God is, which is love. So maybe, again, I want to back to Moore and, and Cromwell. I don't think either of them was quite uh, the caricature that certain uh, pieces of art have made them. They, like all of us, were complicated individual human beings with both strengths and weaknesses, with failings and good parts, and it's worth reminding ourselves that despite the fact that that's how we are, God still loves us. And today I want to remind you, God still loves you. So be patient with other people, and maybe most importantly, be patient with yourself. Thanks for being with me. Stay in touch, be well, and God bless. Mm -hmm.